Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm It's Robbie Rhino and in today's video uh, we're going to be taking a look at the recently released M50 Ontos which is a Western Alliance premium tank destroyer uh, in the Escalation era so that's era uh, era 2 I believe. <laughs> um, I'm going to run down a little bit of uh, the statistics um, and my commander and equipment that I use um, and in the background you'll be watching my first ever game in this tank which turns out to be a pretty decent game on Fredbang and then I have three other replays to show you. So this tank it comes with a 65% silver bonus earn which is a whopping um, silver bonus earn and it's absolutely fantastic for just grinding those uh, grinding those credits and uh, yeah I find it's an absolute blast and you'll uh, hopefully see in the gameplay why I think it is. Um, it also has 10% extra XP and commander bonus earn. Uh, hit points 2190 which is pretty pretty standard for this kind of era especially for sort of a, a lightly armored tank destroyer like this. Um, it has a has a pretty good speed limit of 48 kilometers an hour. Um, it is a little bit sluggish to get to that speed and the reverse speed is pretty pretty slow so I um, I'll tell you what I do to combat that in a second um, it will has a whole traverse speed of 38 degrees a second and a turret traverse speed of 30 degrees a second and the turret which mounts the uh, <laughs> the six guns you see on top um, on, uh, only goes to about 40 degrees to the right and 40 degrees to the left so you do have to be careful about getting circled by fast light tanks like the armadillo in this era things like that um, it's got great gun depression at 10 degrees and if you get to a ridge line uh, all they can see is your gun because the guns are mounted on top of the tank so um, yeah you can sometimes bounce or they just hit your gun and they, they have nothing to fire if you just sort of stay behind the ridge and uh, yeah and try and be try and be careful it has gun elevation of 20 degrees which is not too bad and getting on to the guns um, six uh, shot auto loader uh, which deals 390 damage of its heat rounds um, with penetration of 480 and it deals 530 alpha damage with 220 on its I think it's HEP, HEP rounds um, I believe it has um, but I find them to be largely ineffective so I carry uh, mainly heat as you can see I only carry one clip of HE. End time is brilliant at 1.9 seconds the accuracy is absolutely fantastic at 0.32 and obviously this is all base so you can boost this up with equipment and commander skills the reload time for the clip is 32 seconds with an intricate re reload of 1.5 seconds so you can get your damage out extremely quickly which is why this is a, a very uh, deadly tank in incapable hands and someone that knows how to play the tank and you know where to fire the uh, heat rounds which is something that I don't always know what to do um, base view range is 525 meters, which is very good, and the camo is absolutely insane. As you can see, the little ring um, around me on my mini map there, compared to my view range cone, it's it's just crazy. It's basically kind of uh, 50 meters short of what the armadillo was pre-nerf. Um, yeah, so let's get a little bit onto my uh, commander that I use. Commander skills that I recommend uh, you use on this tank is Sixth Sense, which I pretty much use on every tank, and Born Leader. Rapid reloading to help get that clip, um, that clip reload down. Then I use Steady Aim and Snapshot to help with the gun handling a little bit. Um, situational Awareness to boost that view range and outspot my opponents. And the last three slots I use Camouflage Expertise, Muffled Shot, and Green Thumb. Um, in terms of equipment, Camo Net to uh, help that concealment factor even more. I think with a camo net and my commander skills, my still concealment, I've got down to about 106 meters, which is insane. Um, and uh, I also use ventilation to have that boost to absolutely everything. And I use a traction system because of the sluggishness and because of the reverse speed and the traverse speed of the hull on the turret isn't too great. So yeah, I, I'm trying to get um, that to be as quick as possible so I use the traction system as a 10% boost to the uh, chassis and hull rotation and the max speed so now my max speed is 52 kilometers an hour with fantastic view range insane camo and yeah this is all turning out to be uh, one of my favorite tanks um, in Cold War uh, I'm just making a ton of credits and it's absolutely fantastic it also has a skin that you can buy um, 
with the tank, um, I think it comes, yeah, it comes with the um, primed bundle, I believe. Oh no, it doesn't. You've got to buy it separately. Why would I think otherwise? Um, but yeah, it's 3,000 gold and it, it looks pretty decent, but you don't really need it. Just make sure you put the camo on to help that camo factor even more. So yeah, we'll go on to a little bit now about what we're doing in this game. As you can see, we've racked up 4.6k damage, uh, direct damage, and 749 assistance. Uh, there's only three tanks left on the enemy team. Uh, I'm just sort of getting a feel for the uh, the shell velocity, which is very slow with the heat and the HE rounds. So you have to be uh, you have to sort of learn how to lead your your shots first with with tanks with fairly decent. Um, Shell velocity thing, like you know, tanks that use APCR uh, in World War Two and like APFDS in uh, Cold War, and then once you know how to lead your targets like that, and you've been practicing, then you can adjust for this heat rounds. And as you see, they fly out. It's like someone's throwing the the shells from the top of your tank. Uh, but once you fired, if you get the the sort of the lead in your head, and you can adjust your aim um, to where you think the tank is going to be, and the best sort of scenario I found is finding uh, targets that are unspotted and they're still and you are able to fire at them you get one or two shells off before they've even had a chance to sort of react um, and with obviously with the heat and the spaced armor um, and heat in general and HE you are going to be tracking your opponents a lot even if sometimes you're not penetrating use that to your advantage try and get them tracked and then put your five remaining shells um, into them and try and penetrate them. I mean, if not, get them trapped for your enemies. And you can also rack up a hell of a lot of assistance um, this way. And as you can see, this tank is capable of pure destruction as we come up behind that Mobat and finishing off uh, for our first replay where we do 7k uh, direct damage, finish MVP, we get two kills, 749 assistance. <laughs> we make uh, half a million silver and I get a first class medal. And this is when I was like, oh wow, this tank is this is pretty damn good. I'm going to enjoy this. So uh, yeah, we're going to head on to the next replay and I'll talk you through what I'm thinking and what I'm doing in that game. So I'll see you there in a bit. So here we are. We're in the second replay of the video now and we're on um, Harbron. Yeah, it's right there in front of me and I forgot the name. Um, this is obviously a map that was recently um, revamped and put back into the game. I quite like this map, it gives you, you know, gives a, ch a tank like this that has great camo and great view range a chance to sort of use use the foliage, use the ridge lines, stay hidden, and dish out the damage. Um, so this tank, it can work, as you saw in the, in the previous game, it can work like a typical sort of sniping TD if you do manage to practice the lead on your targets and you do... Um, you do know where to shoot the enemy from long range. Obviously with heat, you, there is no drop off in penetration, so you're going to be getting the same penetration as if they were right in front of you, uh, which is obviously a bonus over the um, like APCR and APFDS. Um, however, it is a problem, as I've alluded to earlier, that if you're firing at tanks like the Eastern Alliance tanks that do have a lot of space armor, it is incredibly difficult uh, if you're shooting from the sides, that sort of thing, and the turret to not hit that space armor, and you will bounce a, a fair few shells, um, non-penetrating hits, and they're just going to absorb, absorb your shells. So you have to pick your spots carefully. And I'm still learning the armor profiles of a lot of tanks in Cold War, um, so I'm not going to tell you the uh, the exact places to fire for every single uh, tank in this uh, in this era. Um, I'm still learning it myself, but. You can sort of tell from a lot of the Eastern Alliance tanks, obviously the, the space armor it, it's quite apparent on the tank. It kind of looks like brickwork. Um, so yeah, don't really fire at that. Um, fire at things like lower plates if they have no space armor on it. Uh, patches on the turret. Fire down onto the like rear of the tank, into the rear of the tank. Um, and you do get lucky sometimes if you're flush right at the side, you will penetrate. Um, Maybe try and take out, like I'm doing now, light tanks out of the game. Go for the lightly armoured tanks that are going to get the vision out for the team, for the enemy team. Take them out and then you can go on to maybe trying to target the, the Western Alliance tanks that do have uh, a bit more juicy armour for you to penetrate. But obviously if there's a, a tank you need to get out like an Eastern Alliance, don't, don't not shoot it. But 
maybe prioritize your targets um, if you're struggling to get the damage out in this tank. I think this tank is going to be one that maybe experienced players or players that are sort of experienced in terms of like their reaction speed and their, and how they lead targets and things, um, they're going to find this tank a lot easier to play than maybe a new player. That doesn't mean don't pick it up, that doesn't mean I think it's bad while we do a little dance there and only tip over. Um, it's just one of those things you're going to have to practice. Don't immediately write it off. Um, I found the M113 um, Western Alliance uh, like tech tree tank to be difficult to play and I'm an experienced player. I'm not no means a fantastic player, not like a brilliant player, but I'm relatively experienced and even I found that difficult to sort of get these penetrating shots. Uh, maybe in World War II it would be easier with, with the armor profiles of the tanks off, but that would they know that's irrelevant because we're playing Cold War. Um, but yeah, this tank can play that typical sniping TD role, but if you're struggling, you can also play it more like a light tank. You'll see in the final replay of this video where I just go ham and to see what I can do, and you can see how you can rack up some great assistance damage. I haven't managed to get anything too fantastic yet, but you, you really can play it like a light tank. Just be wary, you know, you have a turret, it only moves 40 degrees to the left and right. Um, you're not exactly the quickest at... Um, your, your hull on turret rotation so you're going to have to learn to free aim when people are circling at, circling at you auto aim it's not really your friend unless you know they're at very close distance and it does bobble up and down as you can see there where we fired that shot into the sky it bobbles up and down when you sort of set back down um, so just make sure you're, you're set before you fire your shells because you know in an autoloader missing any kind of shell is heartbreaking and it means you just sort of go through that blooming reload again um, but as you can see, we're, we're so close to all these tanks and they're just not spotting me because this tank has insane camo. It's such a, a, like a, a small tank as well. It's just a little pest. Um, I've heard people calling it like the, the new armadillo and, and in some ways I can kind of see why, but it's nowhere near overpowered in my opinion. I've seen lots of people play this tank extremely badly, too aggressive or you know, they just can't get the shells in because they don't know how to lead targets and as gonna, I'm going to come up right behind this uh, object 120 dump my entire uh, clip into him and yeah he's out of the game that's just how devastating this tank can be and we have one shell left going to try and put it into this uh, Mobat I believe and as I've been waffling on talking about how to play this tank we've now racked up 5.2k direct damage and 629 assistance damage we get tagged in the back there. I'm just trying to <laughs> trying to avoid the ATGM there from the uh, I think it's Object 934, and I've got myself into a little bit of a sticky situation. I'm just going to try and stay as calm as possible. Um, fortunately, <laughs> I don't take any damage or much damage at all there from the ram, um, and I actually do damage, which is I don't know shocking. But I'm reloaded again. Uh, the food boost is helping. I I take the uh, food consumable. I don't really use the smoke. Uh, equip uh, consumable or the uh, the health regeneration in any of my Cold War tanks. I think it's just a habit from, from World War II. But I'm now just sort of playing cat and mouse with his Sheridan. I know that he can finish me off with his ATGM or his HE round. Um, so I'm just going to hot shot him there and that's when um, you can sort of use the auto aim there. I was lucky to not hit the rock but I had to react as quickly as possible and the first thing that came to my mind which is auto aim which probably isn't a good sign but you know, I, I feel like I I aim uh, my shots as much as I can and I use auto aim, you know, as and when it is necessary. I felt kind of pressured there, so I just wanted the hot shot that guy. Fortunately it went in and we're still in the game. I don't know what I'm doing with the map here. I think I'm just checking who the last tank was alive and I'm thinking this light tank's gonna be circling around the back because it saw the heavy come up after him. Um so I'm just gonna be chasing this tank down now. We're already at six point one K, six hundred and twenty nine assistance. And yeah, this is going to be another game where we're probably uh, going to get close to 7k. And there you can see I'm free aiming. I have to free aim quite away in front of the tank because of the shell velocity. But we get our three shots in. We finish three shy of 7k damage. It's 6,997. 6, uh, we pick up four kills in this game. Uh, 878 uh, assistance damage. Half a million credits again. We finally get that uh, ace tanker badge. This might have been my fourth or fifth game or something like that in this tank. And yeah. Another great game and it just shows the, c the capabilities of playing this tank a little bit more like a light tank. So that's it for this replay and I shall see you in the third replay for this video. 
So we're now in the third replay of the four replays on this video. And these last two replays are going to be on vineyards. Um, I love this map. I know a lot of people don't like it. But I especially like it in Cold War. It, you get line of sight um, quite quickly from from sort of spawning. So you do have to be wary of that. But uh, we've got a lovely spawn here um, on the uh, east side of this map um, in the middle. And I'm just going to sort of shoot forward uh, to, the, I think, either the ridge in front of me or the mid ridge, uh, sort of down the sort of middle of the the five and six lines. And I'm going to try and use my view range and my camo to get as much uh, vision out for my team as possible. And again, this is just showing you what you can do. You can use this like a pseudo like tank as well as using the tanks. Uh, sort of tank destroyer capabilities at the same time um, yeah I'm gonna go straight forward and I found this is a, uh, this is a very good tactic in something like an armadillo any kind of light tank um, World War II or Cold War from this spawn you can use this ridgeline if you've got good camo um, yeah sit here use the foliage um, I've boosted my food to boost that view range and I'm just gonna poke over uh, saw that ATGM coming in in uh, I don't think it was going for me, but I've seen this light tank come out. Light tanks, extremely uh, dangerous, going to get as many shells into them as possible. I managed to get three in, I believe, for 748 damage. And, you know, the t the enemy team is severely weakened just by going here, by getting this vision out, um, by being aggressive. You don't always have to sit back. Uh, by no means be reckless, but I think I was I was having really good games and I was now trying to sort of push this tank to its to its limit, see what you can do in terms of spotting, in terms of playing it like a light tank. Uh, and I found it it works really well. Obviously be wary, like I said earlier, of getting YOLO'd or, or you know chased down by an enemy light tank or, or a medium and you know, MOBATs and things like that are extremely fast. Most tanks in this uh, in Cold War are extremely fast, so you do have to be careful. And if you get rammed, you are going to feel pain. Uh, I'm going to try and aim for the back of this uh, BMP1. Missed our first shot. I believe we put the last two in. He gets tracked till we damage his engine, and then he gets taken out. Um, yeah, we're already up to 1,800 damage, 500 assistance. Uh, we are uh, down by one tank, but I'm sort of feeling confident that <laughs> I don't know. Our team, this side of the map, are gonna are gonna take this side of the map. Where it looks like we're losing in the southeast corner of the map. But um, my job here is just to keep keep tank keep tanks uh, lit up. I'm gonna be sort of rocking backwards and forwards, rinsing and repeating. Um, and I think now I've probably noticed an opportunity. I most of the tanks have been spotted on the enemy team. I feel comfortable uh, with this tank's low um, profile that I can get to this little ridge here. And near their spawn point, I can poke over, and if anything tries to rush me, if anything clicks over, they are going to be um, get shot. Well, shot at by my team. Uh, well, that's my hoping anyway. And these, as you can see, these shells, they do look like they're being thrown, um, sort of from the top of your tank. Because, uh, well, technically they are when you're down the sniper, <laughs> the sniper sights. Um, yeah. It's it's it, it's kind of a weird thing to see when you are in sniper mode and you're seeing these shells looping over. Um, it, it has its advantages. You can loop shells over ridge lines if if you do auto aim, and that is a great way to use auto aim. If there's a ridge in front of you and you don't have a, a, a sort of line of sight when you get on your your sights, if you auto aim and it sort of clicks onto them um, and you see like a red marker, then you are able to loop that shell over the ridge and uh, yeah, get shells into them and here you're seeing the problem with the heat rounds I'm gonna try and aim as best I can there I choose the the right the right spot there right at the rear of the tank um, at that angle I wasn't gonna be going through the side and now I've noticed that um, you know there's a few tanks there there's only two people backing me up and I'm just gonna try and lead these tanks away um, trying to get them to chase me and uh, get them into my uh, teammates fire which is kind of like you know like a light tank uh, technique which is what you can do and always make sure you're moving while you're reloading if you're gonna play it like a light tank don't sit still let them come at you make it hard for hard for them sort of chase them dangle that carrot in front of them and hope that they just uh, sort of follow you and you know look at that <laughs> in a clip we've finished the tank off and we've completely decimated um, decimated that t62 there <laughs> for 
Fortunately, we we're evading shells like a ninja. There we go. Stop and reverse. He goes forward. Um, we've got nine seconds left on the reload, and we're just going to follow this tank around. And you're seeing the problems with the 40 degrees turret to the left and right. I'm going to stop, swivel around, and hopefully... Yeah, I was hoping that I was going to um, track that tank with one of my shots. And I'm choosing all the wrong parts here. That was terrible shooting. I'm shooting all the space armor at a slight angle, and it's never going to go through. It might have tracked him, but yeah. Now auto aim in, because I think I got a bit fed up there. And then we aim our last shell where we know we can penetrate right into the rear of the tank. And another frantic game, but another game where we pick up seven <laughs> over 7k damage. 7.3k direct damage. Uh, we finish MVP once more. Um, 700 assistance, two kills, another half a million credits, another mastery badge. And yeah, it, it, we're racking up the silver, I think, in the... <laughs> In the games in this replay, we've made sort of you know like one and a half million already. So there's one final replay I wanted to show you where I just go ham and I don't know how I survived. Just a bit of fun. Uh, I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you there in a bit. So here we are. We're now on the final replay of the video. Uh, we're back on vineyards in the same spawn. Uh, I believe I had the same intentions as the last game where I was going to go to the 5 and 6 uh, line, go right to the middle and try and spot out. But it seems, soon becomes apparent that our whole team wants to go to the corner of the map and chat to each other. Uh, so yeah, this, this battle takes a very strange and hectic course as you'll see uh, as we load in. Uh, so would I recommend this tank? Yes. Uh, is it worth worth the money? I mean, I don't think many tanks, especially in Cold War, for the price of real money buying pixels in a video game is arguably, you know, not worth it. But it, 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 it depends whether you get the enjoyment out of it at the end of the day, whether you feel it's worth it for you. Everyone's got different financial situations. Everyone's got different thresholds of what they're willing to pay on a video game. You know, you could buy a whole video game. You could buy five for the price of one tank in this game. But, you know... It depends what it means to you. For me personally, I'm going to get it. I do this as a hobby. I play this game a lot. You know, I've played it for over seven years now. I I enjoy the tank. It makes me a lot of credits. And I feel like I probably will play it quite a bit more. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to purchase it. Um, but as you can see, what we're doing in this replay now, we've noticed the whole team's camp in that corner. I'm going to try and cut up through the middle and... Just go absolutely ham. I was going to sort of push and see what I could do with this tank to get the assistance uh, up. I wanted to get a good assistance game for you all to see. Uh, this is a little bit more than previous games. It's not, like I said before in the last replay, not overly fantastic, but it, you know, it's not a bad amount of assistance. Uh, we've spotted this T72 M1. <clears throat> we ought to aim one into him, two into him, three, four. Those last two have bounced. That's because we auto-aimed and it hit spaced armor. And because we auto-aimed and we didn't aim when we probably should have when he was going away from us, uh, we're only able to put one more in. He's a one-shot. And I was scared he was going to come over the top and finish me off. But luckily our heavy was backing us up. That M6 is looking at us. I go in behind this building to get unspotted. And I think it's right about now. I'm just like, you know, screw it. Like, our whole team's there. I feel like if, if this flank doesn't make a push... Our base is already being contested. We're going to lose this game. We're going to get surrounded. So I just want to—I want to be the aggressor. I don't know why I'm doing it in this tank. It is a little bit reckless. I don't recommend you play like this all the time, but it—it it does show what you can do, what destruction can do, and you can get people flustered. They miss shots, and you'll see what I mean when I say I don't know how the heck I am I still alive in this game. Um, so now we're going to push over. I want to dump my uh, dump my clip into someone. Mobat's nice and juicy. Miss our first shell. Make sure we go through the wall because the heat shell won't go through the wall. And we're going to put all of our shells into this Mobat and finish them off. And right now there's three tanks that should be looking at me and getting me out of the game. But only one's looking at me. <laughs> and I managed to escape with my life. I've still got a thousand hit points. God knows how I managed that. But we've already racked up 3.1k damage and 400 assistance. And for a lot of players... You know, that, that's an exceptional game for a lot of players. That's even a very good game. And for myself, you know, that, that's that's not too bad. I'm still going to make a lot of credits. I know I can do a lot better, but it's not the worst game in the world. Um, because of the low profile, you'll see this M60 wanted to come over and shoot me, but he'd have to expose the whole of his tank. I give him the chance to shoot me, and he, <laughs> he obliges. But 
with my clip and the last shot of my friendly opponent, he gets finished off. We're down to 600 hit points. And I've said it before and I'll say it again in terms of hit points. You can't carry them over. You know, they don't stack up and you can't use them again. Feel free, especially in autoloaders, uh, to trade. If I'm going to take one shot and put five or you know six into another tank, it, it's worth it. In, unless, obviously, it's a situation where you will lose the game. For the most part, it's worth it, though. And this M113 has annoyed at me. I'm trying to avoid... <laughs> I'm trying to avoid uh, his fire. Um, I'm running him on a merry dance. Um, fortunately, I think he might be auto-aiming at me. And they ha uh, that tank has heat shells as well, so the, the sh slow shell velocity will uh, will find it difficult to reach me in time if he's auto-aiming. And, yeah, we move on. So now we're up to 5k damage, 1,100 assistance. I feel like I can push this higher. I'm just going to go ham again. Um, go straight for their spawn, see what's what's camping around there, and just see if I can bait people into stupidity by being stupid. Uh, yeah, like I said, I don't recommend you play like this all the time. There is a level of aggression that you can go to. Um, you know... It, this is this is probably on the on the very on the threshold of being just stupid, uh, and it probably already crossed that. Um, but I just wanted to show people, you know, what what you can do in this tank. That light tank gets shut down as uh, he comes over to finish me off. I've got two shells left and a dream, uh, 300 hit points, and I'm going to try and get the last two into a tank. There we go, and I'm going to try and evade <laughs> shots for as long as possible. I don't know how these tanks are missing me. I, I'm guessing they ought away. I managed to ricochet a shot there off my gun, I think. Um, but me being the, the distractor, I'm hoping gets my time team to advance. And as you'll see um, shortly, this this game will be wrapped up very quickly. Um, as soon as I sort of die, I've distracted them long enough. My team have advanced over the ridge and they uh, finish, finish the enemies off for me. Uh, I have a little bit of a problem there with my controller. <laughs> have to go and get my other one, try and sign it into my account. Yeah, and there we are, we're back in and they're down to one tank, which I believe is the enemy M50 on toss on there, uh, on, the, on the enemy team. Uh, but yeah, we've uh, all but won this bar finding the tank, which can be very difficult, because as, as you've seen, this tank has crazy, crazy camo. Um, yeah, I, I hope you've enjoyed these replays. It's a little bit longer, um, but I wanted to show you all the good games I've had. It took me... It didn't take me too long, to be perfectly honest, to have good games in this tank. As you, you, you saw, the first replay in this uh, video is the first game I had in this tank. Uh, I just... I got on with it. I think it's because maybe I'm used to playing tanks with good camo. Um, and uh, I'm quite, quite competent. Not the best, but I'm fairly competent at leading targets. Uh, and if you're fairly competent in leading targets, you're fairly competent um, knowing where to shoot enemy tanks, uh, I think it's a great purchase. Um, maybe for a novice, maybe for someone that's been playing for a year and under, think about it a bit more. Um, but if you if you feel like the look of it, by all means go ahead. Uh, we finish MVP, only get a kill, but we have 6.8k direct damage, 2.2k assistance. Uh, first class, um, as you can see, we make... Uh, yeah, 550,000 silver. So in the space of this video, all the replays, we've made 2 million credits. And, you know, you can use them World War II and Cold War. So I think this is a great, uh, a great showcase for this tank. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Thanks for the support. I hope you all have an awesome Friday and a great weekend. And I shall see you soon. Bye for now.